When I was in high school, I, uh, I ran, I did football, all right, and I went on football my freshman year, and at the time, uh, the track coach, Rocky Palmer, was also a football coach. So he said, hey, why don't you come off track? So I said, all right. So I went and did track, and I uh, ended up being pretty good at it. So, uh, you know, did track in high school, indoor and outdoor track. Um, you know, I was part of an excellent team. Uh, we were back-to-back -back state champs in 98 and 99. Um, it was a great time. Uh, our coaches, you know, kind of set the example for the coach that I am today. It was just, you know, work as hard as possible, you know, enjoy having success and just keep getting better. So um, that's kind of the model that I follow. So uh, it was a great time. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a lot of success. So I thoroughly enjoyed it when I was in high school. So I, I obviously I went here and I uh, played football. Um, and growing up, I always played, you know, football, basketball, baseball, you know, the normal, the normal three, I guess you could call it. Lacrosse wasn't really around back then. Mm -hmm. And um, so I played football as, as a freshman. That was kind of always my favorite sport. And then I played basketball, played freshman basketball. And then um, baseball just kind of always, I was a little bit of a mover and a shaker as a kid. So, like, it was a little slow for me. So I ended up trying track mm -hmm. um, during the spring season as a freshman. Um, I was pretty good at it, you know, I was a decent little sprinter and a good pole vaulter, so I decided I liked it, and, and so at that point I made the move away from basketball. So I always played football, um, but then I started doing track during the indoor and outdoor season. Um, and uh, we had a really good coach back then, Rocky Palmer, he's at Wesley High School now. And um, he kind of was a football coach too, and he kind of talked me into it a little bit. And, and when I saw how good I was, obviously, it was just immediately mm -hmm. something something I really loved. Um, so that kind of became my main sport at that point. Um, we didn't have a ton of success in football um, as a team. Um, but as a, as a team of track, we had a lot of success. We won a couple state titles and, and individually uh, you know, won a bunch of stuff. So it was a great experience. Mm -hmm. um, I always knew I wanted to get into coaching. So uh, I started taking strength and conditioning classes when I was at UConn, anticipating that I was going into education and, and going to become a teacher at some point. So uh, I just started taking you know, those classes, kind of making me better at you know, the, the training side of, of, of sports. I didn't know what I was going to coach. And then Mr. Parkinson, who was a year older than me, got a job at Plainfield High School. And I got a, a teaching job at uh, Plainfield High School, uh, kind of right before the school year started. I actually wasn't even certified yet. I got it under a DSAP, um, which is a shortage permit. And so they hadn't had it filled like two weeks before school started. So I just kind of applied for the math teaching job, and they were like, we don't have anybody else, so you're hired. Here's a book and here's a curriculum, go ahead. <laughs> and so as if that wasn't enough, I also got into school about the first week of school, and the uh, athletic director there, Bob Aram, when he called me in his office, he's like, hey, I heard you ran track in college. And I was like, yeah. He's like, congratulations to the coach. You know, he came home from the interview. Uh, we were roommates at the time, and he said, hey, uh, I need some assistant coaches. You want to help me out? I said, all right, cool. So uh, that was my last year at UConn. So uh, I graduated in December. So like the first half of the indoor season, the first month of the indoor season, I was still in school and I would go hop out Mr. Parkinson uh, at track practice in Plainfield. And then, you know, we just started really enjoying coaching track and field. It's just, you know, a really, really rewarding sp sport to, uh, to coach. So, you know, we just kind of grew from there. Like the team's head coaches, the students of Stonington High School have also been attracted to the track and field. But what exactly is the appeal? I like track because you can see yourself get better and it really rewards those who work hard. Uh, it's not like, even if you're naturally gifted, you're not going to get anywhere. Or you won't do as well as you could if you don't try. And so I take pride in the amount of time and effort that I've put into track. So I'm happy with the results that I've gotten and I feel like once people start seeing the results, they'll appreciate it as well. I think that track is a really like individual sport. Even though we contribute points as a team, and that's how you win a meet, I think that um, a lot of the time it's you like running against yourselves. Like I'll tell the freshmen that you're not running against the person next to you. You're running against your own time. You're trying to PR. And I think that, that it's a lot easier for kids to see their times improve 
and like to feel good about themselves versus a team sport where you might win a game but you don't know how well you played unless you like watch film or something. So it's a lot easier to see your improvement and like when you win a race it feels awesome. I started doing track because I wanted to do it to stay in shape for lacrosse in the spring season, but I quickly found that it's more than just staying in shape and it's a lot of fun. And the appeal of it is that you're running, but it's not just running. You feel an accomplishment when you finish a race and you look back and you see your time. And you can track how your times change over the course of the season. And I just really feel that it's a great way to compete and even stay in shape if you're doing other sports. I chose track over other sports because, well, my family's wanted me to do it my whole life and I figured it'd be a good gateway sport for me to start my life to be athletic Well, you know, in track, I can go all out on the track here and I can just really, it's, it's really just like letting go. Nice. It's very nice and I don't, I don't want to say revealing, but it's just a really nice way to get rid of some energy and it's with a great people, as you can tell. Oh yes, there's my other shoe. There's my other shoe. So you know, I don't know what it is, I don't know what it is about track, it's just, something just feels right here. Um, I think a couple things, one is that it applies to so many different types of athletes. Um, no matter what your skill set is, whether it's strength, speed, you know, explosiveness, whatever it is, whatever your size, whatever your shape is, there's something that can fit you. You know, whether you, you, you're good at running for long distances, but you're not that fast when you're distance running. If you're a little guy who's really fast, you can be a sprinter. If you're a big kid who maybe doesn't like to run, there's still a spot for you, you can be a thrower. So, you know, you always have, you know, when you go against a meet against Fitch, you go against your, your, your EC schools or whatever, I have no limit to how many people I can enter in a specific event. I can enter everybody. So it's not like basketball where you have five on the court, or football you have you know eleven on the field, or soccer, I think it's eleven. I don't know much about the cross, I don't know how you want to feel the cross, but everybody gets the opportunities to compete. Um, and then as you get better that opens more opportunities to compete. And it's very quantifiable in that you step on the track, you run a time. If I run the mile I run you know I run a five ten mile and then the next time I run five oh eight and then the next time I run five five oh three and then maybe I break five minutes. And then additionally too, it's, it's always easy to see yourself getting better because everything is so measurable and so quantitative. You know, if you ran 205 in the 800 this week and then you ran 204 the next week, you got better. It's hard sometimes in other sports, whether it's football or basketball, hey, you played better today. And so it's easy to measure your improvement and kind of gauge how well you're doing because it's a simple number. And it's a lot is said in that one number where is if I'm a, you know, a defender in soccer, I don't score goals. I just have minutes on the field. That's the only statistic that, you know, kind of is attached to my name. So I can't really measure my improvement or measure my success individually because there's no data to go with it. Well, how, how do I know that as an athlete? My coach told me that, so I'll trust him. In track, it's real easy. It's right in front of you. It's cut and dry. It's numbers. And as much as kids maybe wouldn't say they like that, I really, in my years, I think I've noticed that they do. To see that hard work and you can actually see those tangible results in front of your face. Is, is always rewarding to anybody. I guess being a math teacher and knowing numbers and things like that, the appeal is is you can always see how you're doing. There's always a number. There's always something that you're chasing. You're chasing a tape, whether it's a jumping event or a throwing event or a, a uh, vaulting event, or you're chasing a clock and you're running for time. So there's, there's always opportunities to get better. There's always opportunities to go out and find better competition. And no matter what, technically you always lose because there's always somebody you know, that's the best unless you're Olympic gold medalist. So there's always, there's always people to go on and go after and to motivate you to get better.